When you first get LightWave, one of the first things you're typically asked to do is to create some kind of title or opening sequence which involves flying in some kind of text object. This is our layout. This is where we would bring in our object, keyframe it, light it, and have it rendered so it ends up right in front of our camera view to open the show. Before we do that, we actually have to make our text object. And to create that text object, we need to go to our workshop, which is Modeler. Now, in Modeler, we have our three views, top, back, and right. The reason this says back instead of front is because when objects are modeled, LightWave likes to think of them as facing away from us. Remember when we loaded up the cow object, it faces away from us. That is a convention that was settled on early on. It, it is needed, you need to understand that's the way things work if you're going to use one of the tools called Align to Path. Align to Path works because it just assumes that everything will be facing away and moving away. Right now, it doesn't really matter because we just choose back instead of front. And this convention also holds when you're working in layout and the back and front seems to be reversed, but really it's just part of the convention. So we're just going to leave it as back the way you create text is you click on the text button and you simply type it in. Now before you can do that, you need to be sure that you have some fonts loaded. And once you have the fonts loaded, you can type in whatever text you want and you can choose the font. You load a font. Sometimes the font, a font list is loaded at the installation of LightWave. Sometimes other people have loaded fonts on the machines before you. Um, but you need to understand how this works. We go to our options, edit font list. It's actually quite simple. We just choose from modeler options, edit font list, and in LightWave 8, in the LightWave 8 layout, that looks a little bit different. It's actually a little easier to use. But we simply add true type font, and we have our list of system fonts here and you can see there is a sample in this little window and this is a PC, it's going to look different on a Mac. Don't trust the sample. It'll give you some idea of how it looks but it may or may not actually be what the font winds up looking like. So we see that I chose that font and it's I should have chosen one a little easier to pronounce but it's there. These other fonts have been previously loaded once I've loaded the font, I can shut down Modeler and those fonts will stay there. You can also, if you're working on multiple machines and they have access to the same fonts, you can save that list. Or if you're upgrading or you're reloading the system, it's a good idea to save your list. So you, once you've worked with this for a while, you'll have your favorite fonts, you'll know the fonts you want to use. Um, for instance, I often use Courier, Times New Roman, uh, Book. They seem to be the most video friendly and the things that cover the most bases. We also have load true type fonts. Now, in your LightWave installation, it usually installs this directory called PS Fonts. Double click on that. These have been in here. Oh boy, um, for probably version 3 of LightWave, if I recall. Um, these are PostScript fonts. You click on them, you don't see anything. It's kind of a little bug. You have to click on All Files, and then you'll get the listing of these fonts. And you can load these fonts, very handy fonts, and once you've loaded them, They'll, stay, they'll remember it and they'll stay in there. So that's how you load the fonts. You have to have fonts loaded. Otherwise, with no fonts, this button is ghosted because there's no fonts for it to work with. But assuming that you have fonts loaded, assuming that you can go into your options, edit font list, and you see a bunch of fonts there, then you're ready to go. You just click on text. And I click on my view here, my back view, and I type in, let's just type in logo. because I haven't deactivated that button, I can 
can still mess with my logo. And chances are all I need to do is reposition this and I'm fine. But I may not like that font. I can cycle between my fonts by using the up and down arrow key. Because the it's still a virtual object here. I've typed in the text, it's loading up the font individually. By the way, loading fonts does consume memory. If your system is low on memory, you may want to limit the number of fonts that you load up. However, that was much more of a concern when we all had like 8 megs of memory on our machine. So I'm cycling through the fonts, finding one that I want. And I'm going to go with a basic square logo. That looks pretty good. And before I freeze this, I'm going to show you two other tools in here. So I've got my object. Right here, I can move it around. These two deals, see the cross here and the cross there? This changes the size of the object. It's not that important because even once it's an object, you can just click on size and you can resize it whenever you want. However, this little deal down here, this is your kerning. Now, kerning is this, the distance between each letter and the object, or each letter and the letter next to it. You can go ridiculously sn slow, small, or extended why you'd want to do this, you never know. But that is the kerning tool. Now I've had my numeric panel open. Now numeric, we haven't talked about yet, but numeric is a very important window. You can open it by choosing windows and numeric options open and close. Now, a lot of the stuff I'm doing just with my mouse on the screen, but I could also go in and punch these numbers in. Set, reset my kerning to zero. I, if you're working in Modeler, you should use the numeric panel all the time. I could also choose which font I want from here. My alignment my axes, which basically means if I accidentally clip, clicked on one of the other screens. But this is how I like it. So let's freeze this. I like the way it looks right now. Well, maybe I want one of the other fonts. There we go. Nice thick font. And thick is good if this is going to video. So I'm going to turn this off by clicking on it by hitting the return button I would get the same action. Now this is just any other object. You notice the blue ends are gone. I can't kern it. I can't rescale it unless I go into my modify tab. It really is nothing more than just another object. It's separated but this is our basic text object. Now it's at this point it's two-dimensional. I look up at my screen here. Can't even see it from the back side. That is because our polygons, switch to polygon mode, are facing forward. We like this. This is almost how it would look if I loaded it right up into layout. Now, it really is a 2D object because it has no depth. How do we give it depth? Well, that's pretty easy. Our tabs up here pretty much describe what the buttons do on the side. I'm going to add geometry to it. So it's multiplying the amount of geometry in here by extruding it, making it go backwards. What tool would I use to extrude it? Well, I'm adding geometry, multiplying the amount of geometry, so I go to my Multiply tab. There's this button called Extrude. Extrude takes a little bit of practice to use, but once you've got it, it becomes second nature. I'm clicking on my top view and drawing it out. I've now extruded it. Now the button is still active so I can change the amount and the angle. 
99% of the time when you extrude, you want to extrude it straight back. And if I look at my numeric box, I can see exactly how much I'm extruding it. I can punch in an exact number, which is handy sometimes if you're doing multiple objects and you want them all to be the same depth. And if I even want to offset it up here, I could do that. Most of the time I don't. If I mess it up, I can always go to reset, start over again. There are also times that I may want to have this segment and say I'm going to be bending it later. Size actually means the number of segments. You see how I punched in 10 and now I've got 10 segments? There are times that that would be really handy. Not this time though. So we're going to make it a uh, quarter meter deep with just one segment. So here is my logo object. There's one more step to make it look really good. And then we're going to go through everything really quickly and you should be able to follow along. We're going to name surfaces and then we're going to create a bevel. So first of all, I'm going to name I'm going to name everything. I'm going to hit my Q button, which is the same thing as I could hit surface here. I'm just going to call everything sides. And just do a little tweaking so we know what things, we can tell things apart. Specular means shiny. Remember that. So, so this surface will be this kind of pale blue with 100% specular and it's going to be smooth. Now that's everything. That's the whole logo. Now I want the front to be a different color, so I'm going to use my lasso tool, holding down my right mouse button, and select the front. Now if you get this, it's usually what happens to my students, they're going, what the heck's going on? It's because I'm in point mode. I don't want points, I want polygons. So I'm going to select the front. If I should accidentally miss one, I hold down my shift key, click on it, and I have my front selected. Now I'm going to change that surface. And instead of this time, I'm going to hit the Q button instead of the button. I'm going to call this front and change the color because I want it to be flat and turn off smoothing. So now I have my text object, two different colors. You might think that's enough. Well, it's not. The reason is we've got this really hard edge. And when this renders, that, is, that comes off really hard. It's not pleasant to look at and actually if it goes out to video, video doesn't like super sharp, unnaturally sharp computer rendered edges. So we're going to put a bevel on there. And this is actually pretty simple to do. I'm going to go back and select those front polygons how do I create a bevel? And what is a bevel? A bevel is a soft transition between these two sides. It gives it an angle between the two. So we're going, to, and that's going to add geometry. It's going to multiply the amount of geometry. So I, of course, I go to my multiply tab and I select bevel. And if you can squint, you can see there's a tiny little B there. You use bevel so often, not just text. Bevel is, an, is a modeling tool. If you're building characters, uh, you use bevel is probably the single most used tool. So I've got my front selected. I've got bevel selected. Nothing's happening. If I click on my screen, move my mouse, Oh, bevel is not selected. There we go, bevel. Look at that. I'm interactively beveling. What I want is something like this. And now I've got a smoother transition around the end. Bevel, I suggest, always using the numeric. You can use the screen to get you close. And I have a problem with bevel. I never seems to go the direction I want it to and sometimes you go too far like you see right here we've got overlapping bevel 
too much. I think it was closer to 10 and 10. The two settings are shift and inset. Shift means how far it goes away from the original geometry. Inset means how far in the bevel is going. You can have a negative inset. You can even have a negative shift. Let's go with a negative shift here. You can see it's moving inward. Sometimes you want to do that. If you have if you want to make a piece of text with multiple bevels that has like a ridge around it then inset, that can be really cool. At this point, oh, we don't need that one. It looks like about 10 millimeters for both. It is pretty common that your shift and inset matches, but it's not a law. It's whatever looks good. So finally with the numeric bevel I'm going to click on New Surface, and I'm going to type in a name and just call it Bevel. This is a really handy tool to have. This creates a new surface when the bevel is created. And I hit Return, which locked in that bevel. If I deselect everything, I've got a new surface is actually the default surface, which is this gray here. And that is my text object. Now that took me roughly 15 minutes to create and surface and extrude and bevel this object. That's because I was explaining everything in detail, loading up the fonts. Let's take it from scratch. Let me close all objects save and just start from the beginning see how long it takes. So I'm going to go create, click on the text button, oh well, that's still remembering last time. So I'm going to go logo, choose a font, we'll choose this font, I'll move it over here, I'm going to spread it out a little bit, that's good. I'm going to extrude it Go to my multiply, extrude, and off screen I'm just typing in 0.5, so it's half a meter down. Let me move it back so we're lined up. Now I'm going to name it, and I'll call this one sides. Uh, purple's good. Turn on smoothing. Select my front. I'm going to name this one front. We'll call it text front and color it uh, green. Turn off smoothing. And we got our perfectly awful green and purple here. And now let's bevel it also in multiply. Click on Bevel, and let's see, looking at my numeric panel, this bevel looks to be about, oh, 20. Let's only have it shift out 15. I'll have a little tighter bevel, I'm going to give a new surface, I'll call it Text Bevel. And here is my object. It's a little too deep. I'm going to select the back with my lasso. Hit my T button because that's my move tool. See, sure enough, little T. Oh, moved a little too much. Let's go to undo. Oh, I still can't get that right. Undo. So I guess I'll just go into my numeric tool and tell it I want it to go negative 250, click on apply, uh, maybe a few more, negative 0.1, all right, apply, I like that. So even with me still talking, 
I created this extruded text object in less than two minutes. I think my record is 37 seconds, but don't quote me on that. So now I have my object. Now I don't like that purple, I don't like that green. We can go into our surface editor, which we haven't seen yet, and change the surface attributes, but we're going to wait until we get this into layout. So we're going to save this object. Save object as going to go in industry, create a directory, and call it logo. And in the next step, we will animate this logo object in the layout. 